Hello, my dear students. Welcome to biology class. In yesterday's class, we shall discuss about some aspects of uh, plant breeding, like uh, how to develop the plant for disease resistance, how to develop the plants for uh, insect pest resistant, or how to develop the plants for increased food quality. Also, we have uh, discussed briefly about uh, the concept biofortification. Right. In today's class, we shall discuss one of the important aspect of food production or enhancing food production that is the single cell proteins. Okay. So, whenever we say the word protein, it is one of the major biomolecule required for our diet okay. to maintain all the cellular reactions, protein must be supplied in our diet. Okay. For that, we have found a way that is single celled organisms. Single celled organisms are microbes which are grown in large scale for the purpose of proteins okay means to get protein our food must be rich in protein so for that we are using we are growing those single celled microbes single celled microbes organisms those are rich in the proteins okay so here they must be not only rich in protein they must be rich in protein first any organism that we are growing that organism must be rich in protein along with protein it must be rich in the carbohydrates rich in carbohydrates along with that it must be rich in healthy fats healthy fats and uh, some of the vitamins and some of the minerals etc okay so for this purpose we are using three types of uh, living organisms one is spirulina One more is uh, second one uh, agaricus mushroom. Third one we are using uh, the chlorella. Okay, so we have discussed this in the uh, first PC, second chapter biological classification, all about it. Okay, so here spirulina is a cyanobacteria. Chlorella is also a cyanobacteria and mushroom is one of the basidomycetes fungus. So all these are used or grown for supplement of the protein and many more nutrients or the minerals. Okay, We shall see one by one how they are being used in production of the food. First of all remember our normal food crops food crops or food grains or the grains contain comparatively less amount of the protein very less amount of protein for example about 3 to 6 kg of grain means the nutrient present in the 6, 3 to 6 kg of the grain are equal to the nutrient present in just 1 kg of meat. Mean just 1 kg of meat contains the equal amount of the nutrients present in 3 to 6 kg of the grain. So, only they went for the alternatives like this. Also, you may remember that a cow that is of 2 
50 kgs a normal weight of the cow okay that will feed on about 20 to 30 kg fodder per day 22 30 kg of the fodder per day but what about the protein it just gives about hardly 200 gram of protein per day means in that milk the protein amount will be just 200 to 300 gram okay but looking at one of the microbe methylotropus methylococcus methylotropus this bacteria is about just 250 gram weight of this bacteria but it is about more than 250 million tons in its lifetime in its lifetime means the it because of its rapid growth because of its rapid growth it gives a large amount of the protein biomass which can be used as a single celled protein okay like that the, our uh, crop plants our uh, crop feeds uh, uh, grains or the cereals or pulses uh, they have a less yield compared to other sources of the food so only we went for the single celled protein single celled protein simply means the single celled organisms rich in protein okay mainly rich in protein uh, along with that they should be having many more other nutrients like uh, carbohydrate healthy fats vitamins minerals uh, and some of the nutrients etc we shall see those one by one okay so all of you know spirulina is a cyanobacteria cyanobacteria also blue green algae they are also called blue green algae okay it's a rich source of protein because of this reason spirulina is most commonly used by space travelers in the different uh, space crafts to different uh, planets wherever they are traveling because of its uh, rapid growth within a short period of time and uh, rich protein content it has been used by space travelers okay and it is very easy to grow it is a uh, very easy to grow grow on any media which is rich in starch okay okay grow on any media rich in starch starch like uh, paddy straw like uh, molasses of sugar cane or uh, any of the crop waste okay or any starch industry waste of uh, starch industries okay you can grow spirulina on any one of the medium any one of the material plant animal etc if it is rich in a starch so only it is easy to grow and uh, produces a rich amount of the protein hence it has been commonly used by the space travelers for a food purpose or also by the use of a protein supplement right that's how spirulina can be grown and it has been utilized by many space travelers okay mushroom you all know one of the fungus belonging to the class Basidiomycetes. Basidiomycetes fungi okay it uh, produces 
the fruiting body the basidio carp basidio carp and its mycelium will be produced in the soil okay and this fruiting body this fruiting body is very rich in a protein very rich source of the protein hence the mushroom cultivation is nowadays become a great agricultural business or extra agricultural business for the farmers not only farmers you can cultivate mushroom in your home also okay it requires a small space even if it is a 10 to 10 feet of the space in your home or the backyard you can cultivate the mushrooms in your home okay plan it and you can start up whenever you have got a holidays meanwhile chlorella is also a cyanobacteria or a blue green algae it also is having the similar kind of requirements for the growth also similar kind of the nutrient sources right hence as an alternative to the food crops these are been used mainly spirulina mushroom and the chlorella okay so this is about the single celled proteins means unicellular organisms or the single celled organisms that are having a rich content of the protein okay we shall now discuss about one of the main interesting important last aspect of this chapter that is plant tissue culture okay you will also study this concept in biotechnology meanwhile we shall discuss a brief idea about tissue culture in this chapter also okay last concept of this chapter is plant tissue culture you should be knowing that it is one of the in vitro cultivation method of in vitro growth of plant tissues under sterile conditions conditions growth of the plant tissue okay growing plant tissue what is this word in vitro right there are two words in vivo and in vitro okay imagine there is a plant in the nature in the nature only we are giving all the necessary supplements to the plant like uh, providing water providing the production fencing etc okay so if any plant if any organism is taken care in its uh, original place original place or original habitat then it is called in vivo in vivo culture in vivo growth in vivo conservation but if the plant is brought out from its natural habitat and given all the facilities outside its natural habitat it is called in vitro okay growth of the plant outside its natural habitat inside the laboratory okay so here in vitro means inside our laboratory inside a laboratory right so in vivo in nature in vitro out of nature means inside the laboratory under human care under human control okay here in the laboratory by providing all the necessary conditions necessary conditions means first major condition is the nutrient medium which is also called a food source 
also called food source that food source must contain carbohydrate lipid vitamins etc also nutrient medium it must contain many more resources better we shall mention them minerals sugars proteins along with that it should mainly contain the growth regulators it should contain uh, the growth regulators you may remember this concept from the first year plant growth and development you have discussed under the title uh, growth hormones growth uh, hormones such as uh, auxin gibberellin cytokinin ethylene and abscisic acid okay but here in plant tissue culture we mainly use auxin gibberellin and cytokinin all these three these are less commonly used in a plant tissue culture okay also along with that we must provide sterile condition means without contamination without contamination contamination means no bacteria no fungus no virus means no infection from the pathogens no infection from the harmful organisms to the culture okay usually they are grown in a petri plate in the laboratory in the petri plate the nutrient medium is added medium is added on the nutrient medium the plant cells will be grown they may take root tip or the shoot tip they can use meristem or they can use any of the freshly growing plant material usually the growing tip of the plants will be selected for growth in the plant tissue culture okay so this medium should be rich in many more nutrients also growth hormones and it must be free from the contamination contamination here refers to the pathogens or the contaminating organisms like uh, bacteria fungus etc okay that's how these are the basic requirements okay and in a uh, plant tissue culture we are using the plant material the plant material used is called explant explant that is any plant material plant part that is used to grow a complete plant under in vitro conditions in vitro conditions and uh, this capacity of the plant material capacity of the somatic cell is called toti potency okay remember it may be a question for one mark in your theory examination toti potency that is ability or capacity of somatic cells somatic cells to develop into to develop into a complete plant complete organism here it is a plant complete organism or a complete plant is called toti potency 
okay this property is been uh, identified by the scientist uh, heberland and steward they have discovered uh, a property in the somatic cells that they can form a complete plant one cell thagondre a one cell in the complete plant tayar agbodu tayar maadabodu elli tissue culture nalli okay now yava plant cell thagontivi adakke en karithivi explant ant karithivi a explant ge on capacity ada en capacity thanu adakella sufficient nutrients medium provide maadidre one complete plant age develop agutte aa capacity en karithivi toti potency anta karithivi okay so and here we have three major techniques used in a plant tissue culture we shall discuss those three techniques of a plant tissue culture and what are the uses and where they have been used okay remember these two definitions for your theory examination one more questions so we have a three major techniques in a plant tissue culture first one micro propagation second technique is a somaculum meristem culture meristem culture third technique is a somatic hybridization somatic hybridization okay we shall discuss these three techniques of plant tissue culture in a detail okay first one micro propagation propagation here is growth propagation means growing okay we shall see one by one first micro propagation it means that growing a uh, number of plants using a small plant material that is what we call a uh, explant in a short period of time short period of time is called micro propagation simply taking a small plant tissue with that we can develop many plants we can develop many plants okay so micro propagation propagation of many plants using small part okay so only the word micro for the small plant material okay here these plants will be morphologically and genetically similar to the parent okay so the plants produced are morphologically and uh, genetically similar to parents and hence they are called hence they are called soma clones okay just because the plants produced are exactly similar to the parental plant hence they are called soma clones and uh, the stable variations produced during the production of uh, the soma clones is called a soma clonal variation soma clonal variation okay the plants produced during the production of many plants using small plant part 
is called soma clone because they look morphologically similar genetically similar hence they are called soma clones and there will be a small soma clonal variation or a small stable variation that's a stable variation is called soma clonal variations produced during this production of soma clones okay it's been used to grow some of the crop plants like tomato banana etc okay simply it says that take a small part of the plant using that you can produce many plants you can produce many plants that is the main aim of this right the second technique that is meristem culture meristem culture we all know that meristem is the the rapidly dividing tissue of the plants it will be always growing and dividing right so this technique is used to grow a plant from meristem take a meristem follow all the techniques of the tissue culture and develop a complete plant right so developing a plant using a meristem okay and this technique is used in growing healthy plants plants from the diseased or infected plants diseased or infected plants diseased or infected okay mainly the virus infected plants remember i'll just show you with the diagram there is a plant there is a plant right this plant is completely infected by viruses completely infected by viruses right but remember the virus will not infect the meristem the tip either the root tip or the shoot tip or any apical or axillary meristem so this plant part mainly the meristem part is not infected by viruses this plant part will not be infected by viruses hence it can be used to grow healthy plants just because virus may infect the root virus may infect the stem leaf etc but cannot infect the rapidly dividing tissue that is the meristematic tissue hence it can be used to grow the healthy plants or non infected plants okay that's how this property of the plants that is non infecting meristematic tissue non infected meristematic tissues can be used to develop virus free plants okay you can expect a two mark question from this in this okay so here meristem is taken and grown in a a uh, controlled medium of a uh, plant uh, tissue culture and uh, the last technique is the somatic hybridization somatic hybridization which is also known as protoplast fusion protoplast fusion then what is protoplast right we all know that every plant has a cell wall every plant has a cell membrane every plant has a cell membrane it has a nucleus it has many organelles etc right 
when you remove the cell wall when you remove the cell wall so you have removed cell wall from the plant cell when the cell wall is removed this complete part is called protoplast it includes cell membrane cytoplasm nucleus mitochondria chloroplast all the parts of the cell except cell wall is called protoplast similarly i will take another cell another cell without cell wall again it is also having the nucleus nucleolus all those parts okay this cell is taken from plant a this cell is taken from plant b right plant a was having some desirable characteristics plant b was having some desirable characteristics the aim is to combine better characteristic of this plant this character was good this character was good height seed color fruit color and here this character was good this character was good the aim was to combine the desirable character from both the plants so one cell from plant a one cell from plant b from both of the cells the cell wall is removed okay then they are called the protoplast or the somatic parts somatic cells okay and then they are induced to combine each other to combine each other so it is done by two methods one is electrofusion electrofusion or chemofusion means the fusion of the cytoplasm of the two can be induced by giving electric supply electric shock also by the chemical treatment okay fusion of the two protoplasts by electric current is electrofusion and the fusion of the two protoplasts by chemical treatment is called chemofusion okay by any one of the methods the proto two protoplasts are fused okay then this can be further developed under plant tissue culture medium which is rich in growth hormones mainly we need cytokinin for continuing growth but for the formation of root and shoot we need auxin and gibberellin okay gibberellic acid and many more nutrients present in the growth hormones right that's how the somatic hybrids are produced okay since this will be a combination of two cells it is called a somatic hybrid somatic hybrid and the process is called somatic hybridization okay hope so combining protoplast of two cells or two different plant cells which are having desirable characteristics is the somatic hybrid and the technique is called somatic hybridization okay and uh, this is how the plant tissue culture will be done using first micropropagation second stem culture and somatic hybridization okay so in this chapter in this plant breeding chapter we have uh, discussed about plant breeding techniques like a collection of the plant selection for the desirable characteristics then hybridization using the many techniques like uh, emasculation bagging cross pollination rebagging etc also we have discussed about uh, bio fortification means improving the protein quality vitamin quality and also we discussed about single celled protein and lastly we have discussed about uh, the plant tissue culture which is one of the major trending technique of uh, nowadays uh, agricultural field because agricultural crop production is must be increased because of the increasing population okay this is all about the chapter strategies for enhancement in food production okay we shall discuss few more things in about plant tissue culture in the next chapter okay so 
it's all about the chapter so we are at the end of this chapter right see you in the next class with next chapter that is biotechnology biotechnology till that keep learning see you in the next class take care bye bye